You can see between here and here, it goes up, right? I'm going, if I were to trace this out, it would be going upwards, okay? But then from here to here, something weird happens. It somehow drops down. So I'm kind of interested in how it does that, okay? So I'm going to cover up parts of the graph now, and I want you to help me think this through. I want us to focus just on this tiny, tiny body <coughs> graph here, okay? Just blinker out the rest of it for a second. I'm only interested in what happens in this tiny spot, okay? Remember, tan is, oops, sorry, green on pink. Green divided by pink. Tell me, is green getting bigger or smaller as you go from left to right? It's getting bigger. Not, not heaps fast, but it's getting bigger, okay? So the numerator, that's the top, let's write this, sin x, that's the numerator, and cos x is the denominator. Sin x is getting bigger, it's getting bigger. All right, have a look at the pink graph, that's cosine, that's the denominator. What's happening to that guy? He's dropping like a rock, right? He's going down <coughs> towards zero. He's getting smaller and smaller and smaller, okay? Now I want you to think about fractions for a second. Let me give you some actual numbers so you can um, think this through. Let's think about what happens if the numerator of a fraction gets bigger, okay? So for example, if I gave you like one over 20, and then I made the numerator bigger, two over 20, and then three over 20, and then 4 over 20. You can see these fractions are progressively getting bigger. Do you agree with that? These guys are all bigger than the previous ones. What happens if I do the reverse, right? If I get the denominator and make it smaller, okay? So for instance, if I start at 1 over 20, I'll make the denominator smaller, I might get 1 over 19, then 1 over 18, then 1 over 17. Now this is not so obvious, but it, I think you can still work it out. As I go from left to right, what's happening to these fractions? They are also getting bigger, right? If I keep going, I'm going to get like to a third, and then to a half, and then eventually I'm going to get to one, right? These guys are clearly bigger than these guys, you see? Okay, now watch. Numerator is getting bigger, denominator is getting smaller. In the graph that we're looking at, for this tiny little section, both of these are happening at the same time, okay? So you told me this makes it bigger, and this makes it bigger. So if they're both happening, what do you expect? It's getting a lot bigger, right? It's like, um, it's like two people are trying to like fill up a bucket, right? And uh, one person's filling up the bucket, that's this guy, the bucket's getting heavier. And then the other guy is also filling up the bucket, making it heavier. So it's gonna get heavy really, really fast, okay? It's gonna get bigger. Now what does that mean for this guy? Okay? What that means is here, the graph I know it goes through here, right? There's my x. It's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. It's going to skyrocket, okay? Now, before I put those in, I need to ask one more question. Let's come back to the whole graph now. Tan is green over pink. Green over pink. Green divided by pink. What's the pink graph equal to at 90 degrees? Zero. It's equal to zero. What happens when you divide by zero? Do you have a calculator there? At least my calculator tells me, if it's still doing the same thing it did half an hour ago, is that when I do any number you like, like say 1 divided by 0, okay, it says, mm, not very happy, right? He doesn't give you 0, doesn't even give you infinity, he says, forget it, it doesn't work, okay? You can't divide a number by zero. I won't go into the details now of why you can't do it, but there are very, very good reasons why you can't. It's not just the calculators are lazy, okay? So all that means is for us, our graph, remember, from this little section we were just looking at, that section in there, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, but it can never actually go to 90 degrees, right? So I want us to indicate that by, where's my black pen? Oh, no, seriously, where's my black pen? Mm, there it is. We're going to indicate that by drawing a vertical dotted line through 90 degrees. Okay, so it's going to look like this. Now this vertical dotted line has a special name and I'll tell you it in a moment. But you don't need to worry about its name right now, you just need to get it on your diagram first. So there's my dotted line. This dotted line is a vertical line. All vertical lines have the same kind of equation, namely x equals whatever number they go through. And they, this one goes through 90 degrees. Alright, we're ready to draw this thing, at least in this small section over here now. Remember from 0 to 45 degrees, it's getting bigger, like so. It's going up, 
And you can see there, I hit that x which I knew about before. Okay. And then this thing happens, right? The numerator gets bigger, the denominator gets smaller, the whole fraction starts skyrocketing like that. Okay. Now, you can see I've drawn an arrow there to indicate it keeps going. Right? It can never actually get to that dotted line because, as you've just seen, you can't divide by zero. Things break down. Okay? But you can get closer and closer and closer. You just can't hit it. Right? You can put in 89.9999999 degrees if you like. Your calculator will be quite fine with that. You can't put in 90 though. It just psh, explodes. Okay. Now, remember how I said, oh, dividing by zero, that's not a good thing here. There's another time when tan tries to divide by zero. Can you see it? Where is it? Can you tell me the angle? It's 270, isn't it? The, the pink graph is zero again, all over again, right? So therefore here, I'm going to get that same dotted line. I'm going to tell you what the name of these things are now. These things are called, and I'll write it down after I draw this dotted line for you. These things are called, big fancy name, can you read that? Asymptotes. There's a silent P right there in the middle. Asymptotes. Okay? These are lines that the graph approaches and gets closer and closer and closer to. Okay? The equation of this one is, again, an x equals something, whatever it goes through, and that's 270 degrees. <coughs> x equals 90 degrees, x equals 270, those are the equations of our asymptotes. Okay? And you can see, I have a copy in here of what's happening over here, remember? It went up, like so, and then it's going to keep going up higher and higher and higher. It's the same situation up here as I had over here, just upside down. Okay? So it's going to keep on going up. Both the negatives cancel, which is why it's a positive. Okay? Can you see down here? Green divided by pink will be negative divided by negative, so you don't end up with any negatives. Now, I want you to try and predict. Have a look. We have a lot of the graph on there. In fact, we have exactly half of the graph on there. We need to fill in the other half. What would you guess that it looks like? Remember, I've got an x there and x there. I'm going to conclude it's going to go the opposite way. You see here I've got green divided by pink, positive divided by negative which is negative, right? So I'm going to get the same thing here. I'm going to pass through that x, and I'm going to go down. You can see I approach this x equals 90 asymptote from the left, going up, and I approach it from the right, going down. Okay? And then I've got the same shape over here. All right, see that weird black graph that we've got in there? Okay. That is the graph of y equals tan x sine over cos. Let's notice a few things about it. Okay. Firstly, it's got these weird guys, right? Asymptotes. The graph has breaks in it. That's really weird. Okay. Secondly, you can see, remember that sine and cosine, they're periodic. We said it just repeats over and over again. Tan is periodic as well but it's a different kind of periodic. Sine and cosine are periodic every how many degrees? 360. 360. That's how long I have to go around the circle till I get another copy of the same thing, right? But you have a look at this. It's a bit sneaky, right? Can you see, let's get my piece of paper again. Can you see that? Have a look at that shape. Have a look at it really carefully. Have it singed in your mind, okay? Now, have a look at this shape. Does it not look familiar? From 0 to 180 is exactly the same as from 180 to 360. Okay? So this guy is not periodic every 360 degrees. In fact, he's periodic every 180 degrees. Right? Another way of seeing this is, you can see that guy. right? See that guy there? I could copy him and I could move him over to here. Right? I guess it would go something like this. <coughs> Up like that. Whichever chunk of 180 degrees you take, you're going to get that copy over and over again. Okay? 